Hi, this is Political Forum for Wednesday night, April 17th, 2013. Thanks for joining us here on Can TV. Our guest tonight will be Alderman Ray Suarez of the 31st Ward of Chicago. Thank you very much for appearing on our on our TV show here, Alderman. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, and thanks, Can TV. I think they do a wonderful job in working with Chicago and the communities and the, and the different groups out there to let the message that they have come out and at the same time making it's easier for people to get the information to the residents of the city of Chicago as quickly as they, they can. We try. We try. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a staff member here at CAN TV, Steve Nicotopoulos. We're going to be talking over the next 25 minutes. You can call in during those those minutes on the number below, 312-738-1060 is the number. Uh, let me go ahead and just highlight real quick some of your information for people to note. Now, of course, the 31st Ward is in the... Uh, I guess it would be the northwest side. To the northwest side. Near Correct. northwest near side. Near northwest side. Yeah, so you uh, primarily have uh, Belmont Gardens, Kel uh, Kelvin Park, Cragen. Right. Tell Hermosa. Me in Hermosa. Tell me a little bit about the, the demographic makeup of the Well, it, it, you know, it, we are approximately 60, uh, 67 percent or 65 percent uh, Hispanic surname. But we have a mixture of every ethnic group in the city of Chicago I represent. I'm very proud of it. And uh, we are located, as you said, on the northwest side. And you can figure out, if you want to more or less round off the boundaries, you can say Pulaski to Central, uh, Fullerton to, Bel to Addison, and uh, in some parts, Belmont. Okay. And uh, you have your own overhead here with some of those details, too. And We're located at 4502 West Fullerton Avenue. Our phone number is area code 773-276-9100. And we're open Monday through Friday, with Monday being the late night, where we have what is called office hours, where we, we see the residents who want to come in and see me. And we're open from approximately... All day, but we dedicate from 3 o'clock till about 7.30, 8 o'clock to residents who want to come in and see me. And I do not make appointments because I don't want to turn anybody away. So if you want to come and see me, you're welcome to come to my office on Monday, and I will see you if I'm there. And I'm there almost 95% of the times, so or 98 I am in my office on Mondays to make sure that I provide uh, the information and try to solve as many problems as I can for the residents of the 31st Ward. Now, you've been uh, an alderman since 1991. Uh, what are some of the main things that you've learned in all these years of serving as alderman to uh, Chicago constituents? I think the main, one of the main is, is, is a commitment that you're there, you're accessible, and you care about the residents and the people that put you and gave you the honor of being their alderman and to work on behalf of their, their needs. Mm -hmm. And that's that. if you do that, you'll be able to do everything else because that shows that you have the time, the commitment, and the attention that they need. Now, you know, uh, we represent approximately 60, about 60,000 round offs, about 58 point. But as good as anyone can be, you can't see everybody in four years. But we tried. And I, I think uh, uh, it shows because the residents of, of my ward have given me the privilege of being elected six, six terms. And it is it is it's not easy to to make sure that everybody tries to to see you. I I attend as many meetings as I can, and I'm accessible. I'm out there uh, in the afternoons, uh, running my streets, running through the alleys, meeting with churches, community groups, mm -hmm. uh, community leaders, because it's important that we both understand what is going on and what are the needs and how to prioritize them to make sure. Now, education is my number one priority. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that if we educate the future of tomorrow, which is our children. We will have less problems on the streets as we're having, you know, look at all the killings that are taking place. And they're, they're, they're young, young people, people that uh, for some reason or other have lost uh, respect for life, have, have lost uh, uh, the ability to sit down and communicate. And instead of talking it out, they do it and they sell it by, by using violence. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, talking about education with all of the school closings, are any of your neighborhoods affected by any of those? Uh, fortunately, not, none of the schools in my community uh, are being closed uh, this, this time around. Okay. Well, um, I told you all it was a live call-in show, so we're going to take our first call of the night here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, Alderman. I read um, in the paper that there were going to be low-cost Internet services um, to some of the lower um, 
income communities in Chicago, and I just want to know if you had any more information about that. I don't have all the details, but I wouldn't. But, I, but it, it, these are programs that are being worked out so that everyone should be able to have internet accessibility in, in our city. Okay. Real quick, I want to point out now you have a new website that you created here. Can you talk a little bit about the the design? Well, of it we try to first of all get into the so-called 21st century, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I hire a young. Uh, uh, a student that just graduated from DePaul, and together we worked on it and we, and we designed this this website with a, with a company that specializes in websites. And I'm very happy that I believe now uh, this website can really get the information to everyone, and we're able to be in touch with each other a lot easier than the old website. Great. We have another caller from the community. Hello, caller. What's your question? Sí, buenas tardes, concejal Suarez. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Tengo una pregunta para usted. En unas partes de su área hay bastante violencia. ¿Cuáles son los planes que tiene este verano para para tanta violencia? Bueno, primero que nada estamos trabajando. Uh, mm -hmm. Primero que nada estamos trabajando con la policía, con los parques. Primero para para ver cuál es la mejor manera de atacar el problema de violencia de la noche. Uh, está buscando programas para mantener a estos jóvenes ocupados y no dejarlos en la calle con sus mentes uh, uh, sí influencial con, con amigos que no quieren nada positivo para ellos. Esa, esa es mi opinión. Y estamos buscando más y más dinero para traer los programas que podemos mantenerlos a ellos ocupados por lo menos. Ellos salen a la escuela a las dos, por lo menos de tres a cinco, a cinco y media que empiezan a llegar los padres a la casa, buscar programas que ellos puedan eh, participar en ellos y sentirse parte del sistema de la, de la comunidad. Thank you for that. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, now you're talking about various programs and whatnot. You have upcoming the big, well, ac across Chicago, there's the big clean and green push. Can you talk a little bit about what's going on? That is correct. Place? This coming weekend, this coming uh, Saturday, is uh, our annual uh, mayor uh, this year, uh, it will be Mayor Emanuel's uh, Clean and Green, and we will work with volunteers from my community to go out and clean, and the and we dedicate this cleanup to cleaning up the alleys in certain areas. Now, what I do is I divide my ward into four sectors, so every four years, uh, each community gets a, 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 a part of this, this program. So we will go out there and clean the alleys, uh, sweep, uh, put all the debris that we can inside the, into the garbage cans, and I, 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 my volunteers are a lot of them are high school students, which they make uh, community service uh, hours through there. And then I provide a, a light breakfast and a, and a lunch from. And uh, we try to uh, influence, hopefully, motivate our youngsters to making sure that they are part of the keeping Chicago clean day in and day out. So what I'm asking them is that when they buy a, a candy. Uh, instead of taking a wrapper and throw it in the street, put it in your pocket until you get to a nearest to a, a waste, waste paper container or take it home. Uh, and, and the high schools are getting better and better at participating in some of our, some of our grammar schools. And I believe that, that this is a great program to motivate youngsters on how they can be part of a cleanup solution in our city. And not just our city, but the community that we live in. Because we can't clean the city at, at, on a war level, but if, every, if all of us join together, we can clean the city, make it a cleaner city, a healthier city. And I believe that clean communities uh, serve as, it is, as, a, as a disenchantment for gangs and negative environments to hang around. Well, I was just going to ask you that. I know you're, you're, uh, you work with the camps office a lot. You obviously mentioned uh, church groups and community groups. How much does trash play into... You know, the broken window theory of attracting a certain criminal element. I believe it's, you know, I, 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 when I talk to some of the youngsters and people, I, I describe it as a, as, as, a, as a sign of a coal. So when you start get looking uh, run down, when you have trash all over, when nobody picks it up, it brings people that do not have any good interest into your community, and, and, and it creates a problem. Yeah. So the cleaner the community, I believe the safer, and most times the healthier. Thank you for that. Looks like we have another call. Uh, hello, caller. What's your question for the show? Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, I understand, sir, that you're the chairman of the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. And so can you describe how you can help uh, renters uh, who live in apartments that are in foreclosure or in the process of being foreclosed? Uh, when you say live in an apartment, are you renting? Yes. Okay, well, we have, a, we have a Department of Housing and Economic Development where we have people that you can call over there, and we will try to uh, uh, look 
for assistance for you on foreclosure. Now, uh, a lot of people have the misunderstanding that they think that because the building is under foreclosure, uh, you have to move out. And, and we have to be careful, too, because some people are paying rent to landlords who just take the rent, put it in their pocket, and do nothing in that building and don't pay a mortgage. So I, I, my advice to the people is if they're, if they're looking for help, call the Department of Housing and Economic Development, uh, explain the situation, and I'm sure that if assistance can be provided. If not, please call my office, and I will make sure that somebody from the department calls you and steers you the right way and give you the right information. Uh, Follow-up uh, question about the Department of Housing. Um, do you, uh, there's generally a lot of money that the city of Chicago is always looking for. Uh, do you think that some of the land or some of the property that's being sold is helping to fill any of the holes that the city has in their budget? I, I believe some of it is, but the hole is so, it's such a huge hole that uh, I don't think that we can do this in, in, in a one or two year deal. Right, right, okay. Uh, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, I was just wondering about bus rapid transit. Um, I remember I was hearing some about it like months ago, but I haven't heard anything about it recently. With summer coming up and construction season, I don't know if there's any updates on it. Well, there are constructions going on in the, in the transit, and I don't have all that information, but I, I, I would suggest that you call the Chicago Transit Authority, and they have a, 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 a an information number, and I don't know it, uh, but you should be able to get it through 311. Uh, when you deal, when you dial, for, and they'll ask you who you want to speak to, and they'll be able to provide you uh, the work that's going that's going on, what jobs are available through the companies that are doing the construction work, and I, hopefully I, that information can serve as a as a guide to get you uh, the information you're looking for. And if you feel, if you feel you didn't receive the information, again, you can feel feel free to call my office downtown. Uh, one thing you wanted to mention today was the annual city sticker sale. Can you go into some detail about uh, what's coming up here? Right. Well, this year will be the last time that the city stickers uh, will expire in June. Under the new proposal by uh, city clerk Susana Mendoza, uh, city stickers will expire as the, your driver's plate, li I'm sorry, your, your license expire. So as if you expire in April, then you have to get a city sticker. If you expire in June, you'll get a city, st you'll get your city sticker. It's, it, we feel it's a, it's, a, it's a lot easier, more efficient way of making sure that everyone complies and it's a lot easier to handle uh, people on a, a smaller volume each month than the, the amount of volume of people. This year, we will provide the services in my office as usual and I tell people to take advantage of it because when you buy a city sticker in my office and you have one, two, three, or four cars, you don't pay any service charge in our offices. Mm -hmm. You go to a currency exchange, they're charging you, some of them are charging you five, six, seven, eight dollars per sticker. That's a service cost. So I, I would suggest that the resident uh, and, and your listeners that they should take advantage, and not just in my office, but all the automatic offices. I, I believe most of them do provide this service in the, in, in the month that the city stickers are on sale, and I think it, it is a really cost-saving. Uh, I talk to people that have four or five cars. I save them through the service, and the city has saved them a lot of money where they can take this money and invest it in their children's school programs, uh, lunch programs, or what have you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before you were alderman, actually, you've had a uh, long history working within the city of Chicago. Uh, before that, you were involved in the streets and sanitation department. Uh, you know, lately there's been a lot of talk about the decaying infrastructure of Chicago and the streets. Is there anything that you tried to start back when you were with that office or, or, or with all these years of experience also being an alderman? Do you see any kind of new strategies that have to be taken regarding keeping up with the infrastructure problems? Well, you know, one of the problems that everybody thinks when they sit on this side and look at the other side that is really easy. Uh, the biggest problem that I feel that we're having is that the cost of doing business by making sure that the people that are working get paid properly, pay materials, it gets expensive more and more every, every year. And I'm not making an excuse. I just think that we have to be able to make it more efficient and make sure that we hold our end of the bargain with our employees and hold them accountable. They get, we want a day's work 
for a day's pay. And it's very important. And sometimes folks forget about this. So uh, uh, the new commissioner is doing a great job. He is a former chief of, uh, uh, deputy chief of police uh, in the Chicago Police Department in Chicago. And I think that uh, uh, Commissioner Williams is doing an outstanding job. And he and I have talked about a lot of new incentives, which I am not going to uh, at the time discuss them tonight. But I think no that No announcements his, tonight? No, there are no announcements tonight. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, perhaps it's not necessarily hiring more people. It's just well, to focus sometimes you on. have to look at the workforce, and you have to be able to have enough people to do the job. And when you take the workforce and you stretch it, it's like a rubber band, and you mm -hmm. keep stretching it, eventually it'll break. Right. So we have to be able to get people, people that are willing to work, that are willing to come to work every day, and are willing to provide a service to our city as, as they should be. Uh, I guess comparatively talking about uh, stretching the workforce, I know that you, you're focused on a lot of anti-crime efforts. Are you at all concerned about the overall number of police officers in the city, and do you think that we need to have any more? Oh, we could always use more police in, in our city. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's but the problem is how do we pay for it? Yeah. And everybody can sit here and say, well, you cut from this place and cut from that place. And that sounds good, and, 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 and I respect those thoughts. But when you cut services from one end that you're getting, you're getting used to have, receiving, uh, for, for public safety, which is great also, then after public safety supposedly comes to an end where everybody feels that it's acceptable, then how do we come back and either repair more streets or fix the potholes mm -hmm. or create housing for seniors? I mean, these are all, all intermingled, so we have to be able to, to do this. But I would hope that the federal government would see, see it fit to give us some more dollars to hire police officers because we do need more police officers in our city. Great. And uh, that's kind of a perfect transition into another event that you're involved with. Uh, here's pictures from your 2012 anti-violence anti -violence march. march. And, uh, of course, here you are with uh, walking with Mayor Emanuel and then, of course, Superintendent Gary McCarthy right here. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about this event, and are you going to be doing um, any other events We like do this, this event every year. Mm -hmm. We do this. It's important to, to we, that we inform our community that we are there and we're, and we're fighting together to keep crime as low as we can. And how do we do this? By motivating residents to believe in, the, in the, what the city of Chicago is doing through the Chicago Police Department, through the CAPS Department, through the great leadership that, that we have in, in public safety, that we care. At the same time, uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you do this? You bring the youth, because the future of our community are our kids. And if you notice that in my march, we have all our grammar schools and high schools come in and they volunteer and they bring out and they're part of this of this march. Mm -hmm. We bring approximately 800 people to 900 people marching and the mayor was really surprised in his first uh, 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 march when two years ago uh, he was out there and uh, uh, we had uh, him there, we had Gary McCarthy there and we had a, a very successful march and, and it's important so what I do is I divide the ward into four sectors again. Mm -hmm. So one sector gets it one year, the next sector, so that everybody feels uh, that they're getting uh, the attention they deserve. And, and it's, what's really nice is that after one group marches from this area, at the following year, everybody's starting to get together. And that's why it's become a, a huge success in our community. And at, and at the same time, this march is to let gangbangers and anyone that wants to come into the 31st Ward, that we're not going to tolerate their disrespect. And that's very important. Great. Thank you. I want to remind everybody you're watching Political Forum on KNTV. This is a live show. You can call in on the number on the screen, 312-738-1060. Alderman Suarez is nice enough to join us here for these minutes, so feel free to give us a call and ask a question with the, uh, the few minutes that we have left. Um, let me jump into um, some, some new developments. Now, I know that you, you brought this overhead with talking a little bit about a new development. Can you kind of let us know where this is? Well, this is a, a, a great uh, proposal that uh, uh, Satella Construction has is, is, is come to my office and we're going to hold, hold a community meeting in that area. That's And there there's a huge uh, lot there at 29, 25 to 35 North Central Avenue. There used to be a landscaping uh, uh, operation there. It's been closed for the last five years. There is a problem because we are having a problem with vandalism, cleanliness. Uh, it just brings a negative environment to our community. So they're proposing to build a three-story, 30-apartment complex, uh, the latest, the clean, well-secure, mm -hmm. uh, reasonable rents, uh, with a component of approximately 10 to 15 percent, what they call affordable housing apartments, not uh, a Section 8 
uh, on this pro on this on this project, mm -hmm. but it's a, an affordable component, and I, and I think that it would really motivate and strengthen Central Avenue, where if we put this uh, as nice of a project as that that is, then we'll be able to start motivating our business people to start uh, also, and some of them doing some major construction, making their their businesses looking a lot more uh, attractive to the client. To yeah. our residents who shop there day in and day out, and how do people find out more about how to? Well, uh, well we will be sending out we will be sending out flyers uh, through our volunteers th through the household in the area that that we're that we're talking about because while it is a war project, it is in my opinion and most people have been the residents that live within two or three blocks of that area mm -hmm. are the ones that really are going to be affect directly affected, and I think they're the ones that, that should be uh, made better aware of it first, and they should be the ones. I went out there uh, a month and a, a month ago, and I walk uh, one of the streets. I walked it for three blocks uh, from 29, so I went 20, 28, 29, and 30, and most of the people that I sp I spoke to were all in favor of the project. Great, thank you. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out that you're you're the vice mayor of the city of Chicago. Uh, for those who don't know, can you tell us a little bit about what it means to be the vice mayor? Well, the vice mayor of Chicago uh, uh, is an alderman, first of all. Mm -hmm. So you take care of your aldermanic businesses and whatever uh, Mayor Emanuel asks you to do on behalf of the city. Uh, you're more than willing, more than happy to assist them. And I think the mayor is doing an outstanding job. His commitment to this city is, is in my opinion, unquestionable. And he has a tough job. He has a job that uh, he has a deficit in, 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 in certain parts of the, of the budgets. And the only way you can close some of these budget deficits is by uh, re restructuring some of the different programs out there and some of the different services that we have. So are you pretty, um, are you pretty up on the numbers and what the, the office of the, the, mayor's, uh, the mayor's office is doing to try to make sure that, I mean, God forbid anything happened, that you were able to kind of pick up the business as it were or is, is every alderman pretty much on the same page about most things I think we're all I think most of us are all informed of what's going on in the city and, and and you look at the numbers and you have a budget book and you listen to the complaints and and you know everybody's got a different idea on how the city and people call us and uh, I but I think we're we are here I think the mayor is young he's healthy so I don't think he's going anywhere for a while okay Another new development in the ward is you have a Walmart coming. Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what's well, where this is and this how is this the, happened? This is the old Menards uh, 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 Center on the 4600 block of West Diversity, and it's been closed now for about five years. Also, we could not get a purse company to, to lease, and finally Menards came to see me. Uh, it's got the right zoning. Uh, it meets all the requirements. So what, what I what I did was it fine. Let's go. Lamar is going to bring in 350 jobs. It is going to be a super center, and it will give people a chance, young people, retired people, and people that unfortunately right now don't have a job, to be able to apply and and, and go to work at Menards. And while some folks say that they don't pay uh, the top dollar, I I. I I sometimes uh, will question what is the top dollar because I feel that if you're sitting home doing nothing. And, and and at the end of the week, you get nothing. If you at least get a job and you work X amount of hours, you're going to have something. And that will help your needs and to pay for some of the expenses of your household. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it is very encouraging, very good, and it will help our community uh, more and more. Well, we only have a little over a minute left, so I want to remind everybody of your basic contact information. Obviously, the ward office is, uh, the phone number is 773-276-9100. And that website we were talking about before is ward31.com. Correct. And we're and our phone number is 773-276-9100. Our office hours are 9 to 5, Tuesday through Friday. On Monday, we're open from 9 till about 7, 7.30, sometimes 8 o'clock. And... Um, with our last couple seconds here, do you have any last points you want the audience to take away with them about the 31st Ward? Well, I, I, I just think that our 31st Ward is a nice, vibrant, healthy community. We have a, a, a great infrastructure uh, of community businesses and and churches, and I think that uh, I'm very proud to serve them. And the people who live in the 31st Ward, I know most, most of them, uh, when I talk to them, are very proud to live there, and they feel very, very, very happy that we're working on their behalf to encourage and growth 
our community and make it a stronger and a safer place to live. Well, thank you, sir, for appearing on Can TV. Uh, we try to do as much community information as we can here as a TV station with our five channels, and we certainly hope that uh, residents of the 31st Ward see the benefits of what Can TV can offer. You know, I, I, I before I, I, I leave, I, I as I as I said it in my opening remarks, I think Can TV is an outstanding vehicle for Chicagoans and 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 community groups and churches to use this vehicle to be able to inform Chicagoans on what they're doing, uh, what they can do together, how Chicagoan communities can grow stronger, and I think that it is uh, a great uh, tribute to the commitment that Can TV has in political forum and the service that they provide, because without them, most of these folks could not afford to go on the air uh, at, at today's market prices. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, thank you all for watching Political Forum. We'll be back next week at 7 o'clock. Uh, thank you to Sylvia on the phones, and uh, everyone, have a good night.